As we saw in the previous video, there are three main categories of machine learning algorithms. Supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. We are going to go through each of these algorithms within these categories step by step. Today we will start with the linear regression. That is one of the most basic types of machine learning algorithms. And it comes under the umbrella of supervised learning. As humans, we like to journalize everything. It helps us sleep better at night. Let's have a look at some journalization examples. The 125 milligram per deciliter blood sugar level indicates diabetes. This is a journalization. The fact that heavier objects falling on your foot will cause you more pain is also a journalization. And the fact that if you hit the like button, it will help the YouTube algorithm is also a journalization. So go ahead and do that. Now, the mathematical kind of generalization can be put in the form of an equation, like f equals ma, where m is the mass of the object and f is the pain that you will endure when it falls on your foot. So, generalization of numbers can give us equations and these equations we can use later to predict new data. So, let's have a look at some basic polynomial equations. But what is a polynomial equation? Now, polynomial just means many terms, like 2x plus 5 are two terms and 3x squared plus 5x plus 3 are three terms. So, in polynomial equations, we have orders. First order is a linear equation, second order is a quadratic equation, and third order is a cubic equation, and so on. So, the order is basically the maximum power of the x variable. Here you can note that the first order has no curves, the second order has a single curve, and the third order has two curves. Another way you can look at this is how many times the graph crosses the x-axis. So for linear, it's first order, so it crosses one time. For quadratic, it's second order, so it crosses two times. And for cubic, you guessed it, it's third order, so it crosses three times. But why are we talking about these shapes of these graphs? So let's say that our data was scattered like this and we wanted to find the best fit for it. So this would be a first order problem, which is a linear task, so we would use linear equations. And if we had a curve in our data, then we would use the second order equation. And if we had multiple curves, we would use a third order equation. But what is this data and how did we get it? Let's have a look. So let's say we want to find an equation that will help us determine the cost of a house based on its square foot. So we are talking about the size. So now our data will look like this. Here we have the size in square feet in one column and the price of the house in the other column. Here the square feet is independent variable also denoted by x and the price is the dependent variable also denoted by y. The price is dependent because it is dependent of the value of the size. The same way this video going viral is dependent on your ability to hit that like button. So if we were to plot, we would put the values of the size on the x-axis and the value of the price on the y-axis. So, given the data, we can simply plot these values. And if we join the points, we would get something like this. So, we can see that our trend is pretty much linear since the price seems to increase with the size of the house. So, we can say that we can use linear regression. Now, we do understand the term linear, but what is regression? Regression is just the fancy term of finding the equation that will fit these points with the least amount of errors. So, if we look at a linear equation, it goes by y equals mx plus c. 
Now the Y and the X we already have. So the machine learning model will try to find the M which is the gradient and the C which is the intercept. In other words, M is the slope of the line or how steep or tilted it is and C is the point where the line crosses the Y axis. Or you can say that it is the minimum price of a house excluding the size consideration. So linear regression in its simplest form is creating a best fit line. But how does the machine know if it has found the best fit? There has to be some sort of feedback that tells us how good the fit was. The simplest method to do this would be to subtract the original value from the predicted value. This will give us the error for a single point and then we can add up all these errors to give us the total error. So this sounds good, but is it really? Well, not. The problem here is that if we had one error, for example, uh, of 60 and another error of, for example, minus 60, then when we add it up, it adds to zero. But in reality, the error is not zero. So to solve this, we can simply take the square of each of the errors. So this way, when we add them, it becomes all positive. So we have solved it finally. Well, not again. The problem we still have is that when we have more data, the error will get higher because we are simply adding all the errors after squaring them. And this should not be the case. So a simple fix for this is to take the mean. So we would simply divide the error squared values with the total samples. So this feedback method is basically mean squared error. Here we find the difference between the prediction and the actual value and then we square it. After that, we add all of them up and take their mean. So this will end up with a single value that will tell us how good our fit is. So let's see this in action. For example, the original error here was 120, but the prediction here is 140. So the error will be 140 minus 120 that will equal to 20. Now we will square this so 20 squared is equals to 400. Then we will add up all the squared errors and then find the mean. Now this gives us a single value known as the mean squared error. The smaller the value, the better the fit it has found. So in other words, the machine learning algorithm is trying to minimize this error to find the best fit line. So every time it finds a solution, it will check the fit by looking at the mean squared error and if it is not good, it will repeat again. So once we have the equation of this best fit line, we can input the independent variable x and get the value of the dependent variable y. This means that we can now use the size of the house to estimate its price. So this was a very simple example with only one independent variable as the size. But in reality, the price of the house is dependent on a lot more variables. So what if we wanted to add the number of bedrooms and the number of bathrooms into account as well? This time we will have three independent variables and one dependent variable. So such a problem can be solved with multiple linear regression. When we had a single variable, then our equation was y equals mx plus c. But this time we have multiple variables, so we will have multiple gradients. So the equation will be y equals c plus m1 into x1 plus m2 into x2 plus m3 into x3, where x1, x2 and x3 are our three independent variables. So this time the machine learning algorithm will try to find the best fit by changing the m1, m2 and m3 and c values. This is hard to visualize as there are multiple dimensions involved. But at the back end, the principles are same as the single linear regression problem. 
in the upcoming videos we will look at how we can apply the single and multiple linear regression techniques using Python. We will look at how to import real world data and the steps required to use it properly. So stay tuned for that and if you like the video give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.